as we are interacting with the world around us, we are taking different signals, different visuals, different sounds, and our brain is constantly, very seamlessly, taking all of these signals and integrating them to have a coherent percept of the world. My name is Fernanda de la Torre. I am a PhD student in brain and cognitive sciences at MIT, studying multisensory perception. Imagine a glass bottle, and imagine there's an object inside of it, and I'm moving it in a particular way. If I pair this with the sound of a rolling ball, it'll look to you as if the ball was rolling inside the bottle. But then if I pair it with the sound of collisions at specific points, it will look like it's bouncing back and forth because vision is what's called ill-posed, which means that there are many solutions to what we're perceiving. What's really cool is that sound can help us identify the actual solution to, to what we're seeing. And very often, it's not the actual physical reality. I work in two different labs. My primary advisor is Josh McDermott, and his lab is focused on auditory perception. Even at the beginning of us working together, he would just send me out into the world and say, just pay attention to your experience. Just kind of hear what you're hearing, see what you're seeing, or go play ping pong with headphones on, like just to see what happens. If you don't have sound when you're playing ping pong, does it get more difficult? And just kind of seeing like, oh, there's this whole playful side to science. It has just been very special. <laughs> it gets chaotic. In my studies with multisensory perception, I am looking at what's called intuitive physics. So intuitive physics is this idea that humans have a model in their brain that predicts and simulates how objects are gonna interact with one another. And so to study the intersection of intuitive physics and multisensory perception, we're using this software developed by the department to simulate physical scenarios where there's also sound. One scenario is a cube scraping on a surface. If you pair it with the sound of a cube that it's slowing down, stopping, and then continuing, your visual perception will change. And so we vary these things and we get people's response and we find that physical congruence does matter, which is very interesting because all of these predictions are typically believed to be done somewhere in the higher level cognition. But this is something that's happening very automatically and very fast, right? You don't even need to think about it. You simply either see a discontinuity on the motion or you don't. And so we're sort of better understanding how is it that this physics engine that we have in our brain, it's also determining how we're gonna integrate sound and, and vision. I can predict it's actually perfectly. In the second lab I work in is Robert Yang's Metaconscious Lab. And my project in his lab is exploring the sense of self, using neural networks to try to model agents in an environment, how from all these experiences, all these signals, at some point, the idea that we are an agent in the world with control of our actions emerges. That sense of self, this like voice that we develop is very, very important and it helps us get out of situations. Like I think if I hadn't had it, I would have stayed in difficult and abusive environments. I grew up in Mexico. My mom was in an abusive relationship and then moved to the US sort of escaping that and I came a year after, when I was 12. I crossed the border illegally. I did the whole like walking in the desert and climbing the fence and so on, only to encounter a new relationship like that in the US. Um, and I ended up leaving home when I was 13, just realizing that it wasn't a good environment. So I was kind of homeless until I was 18. I was undocumented for many years, working as a waitress and saving up to, to go to college. And, and when I was 18, I got a scholarship to study computer science and math at Kansas State University. It allowed me to think of things very differently. It added layers to, to my experience, cognition and rules and logic and truth. All of these things were just very attractive to me. And, and that's kind of when I knew like I have to pursue this. I want to spend as much time as I can in this space. I got very lucky and got selected for the post back here at MIT to do research, take classes if you want to. They invited me to apply to the PhD program. I did rotations and just fell in love with so many different labs and topics, and that's kind of why I'm in two labs right now. <laughs> just being in a community where I get to hear these views and everybody's just exploring their minds, exploring the people around them. 
One of the things I see my life taking form in is in using science and my community work as a way to help people get to that place of understanding, oh wow, my subjective perspective isn't the ultimate truth. Because I do think it allows us to be more compassionate with each other and know that we can be wrong, right? I can see a ball rolling, but actually it's bouncing or something like this.